Hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from the Laws of Attraction in Action. And that's the laws, plural, plural, laws with an S of attraction in action, not the law. I am a choice and clarity expert and I talk to you about the nuances of being able to utilize the laws, the natural laws, spiritual laws, God, God's laws, whatever term makes you feel comfortable. But I talk to you about um, being able to use the laws and understand the nuances, the nuances, the, the, these things that appear to be almost imperceptible but have such a great impact on your ability to bring into your life, to manifest into your life that which you say that you want. So once again, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn and today I'm actually going to answer a question that was posed to me and the question that was posed to me prompted me to actually do this video because other people have actually asked me this question and I realized perhaps I hadn't answered it effectively in some of the things that I've already done. So we're going to get right to it. Again, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn and I'm going to answer a question that people have been asking me today. Okay, the question. When it comes to affirmations and for instance, people say, I am worthy. And they're saying I am worthy to offset a belief that they are holding. Is it possible for the affirmation to be too wide, too wide a scope for the change of the belief that the person is holding to set in? So what this question really is asking is by affirming, I am worthy, I am happy, I am love, or whatever it is that you're affirming after the I am, is the scope of just saying I am too wide for the belief system to change? Well, I'm gonna phrase it this way. Once you have said, once you've started the process of creating an affirmation or even saying an affirmation, within you, somewhere within you, you can see where you are loved, where you are worthy, where you are happy, where you are whatever it is, you know, um, financially secure. With you, you can see that in your mind, okay? Otherwise, the affirmation, the desire to affirm this, the desire to, sorry, manifest this, wouldn't actually arise within you. So the problem isn't actually what you're saying, the words that you're saying. And if you believe that you are actually worthy, then it's as simple as that, you're worthy. What happens to most of us is that we are, we create an affirmation or we say an affirmation. And an affirmation should be something that rings really true with you. It should be something that, that feels right to you. Something that really feels right to you. And let me just say this, an affirmation is you utilizing the power of your spoken word. And believe me, the 26 letters of the alphabet have power and control over how your life manifests. So an affirmation is you actually utilizing 26 letters in this alphabet, the English uh, alphabet that we use, to create what it is that you say that you want. Words have a vibration, letters have a vibration. And when you bring these letters together to form a cohesive word, a word that has meaning, a word that has emotion, a word that has feeling, a word that has power. When you bring these words together and create an affirmation, this goes forth out into the ethos and will come back to you as something in tangible form, as something in physical form, as something in a manifested form that you are wanting. Even if that physical form is that you want to feel internal peace, 
it's a physical thing that you're going to feel in your being and or if you know if you want to manifest a, a, a pc or you know a camera or whatever it or whatever it is it will come back to you in that form words are one of the most powerful things that you have and most people don't realize the power of their word until something goes wrong and they they may sheepishly say or say um, they might be upset. I can't believe I called that into my reality. I can't believe that I said that and this happened. Believe it. Everything that has and is happening in your life is happening as a result of something that you have said. Now, many people find that very hard to believe. I've had people walk out of my lectures. I've had people actually want to take a baseball back to me for saying that. But nothing can happen to you without you first making the choice. This is God's law. This is a universal law. This is a spiritual law. It's a natural law. It is the law and it's immutable. You can't change that. So for people who find this very distasteful, I didn't ask for that to happen to me. No, what you did was you said something that opened the gateway for it to manifest. Well, I, all I did was decide to cut through the park. I, 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 I didn't want to be robbed or mugged or locked in the park. No, you didn't. However, the choice that you made opened you to that, um, to that manifestation. But that being said, that, that's a whole nother, uh, 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 whole nother tutorial by itself. Getting back on point and on topic, getting back on point on, on topic. Once again, affirmations are words that you put together for you to solidify or bring into manifestation the changes that you want to occur in physical form. Once again, remember, words are a stream of energy by themselves each letter has its own vibration and when you bring it together it creates a powerhouse that creates a gateway to the physical thing that you want to experience so it brings the physical thing that you want to experience in form now please bear in mind and and this this comes from hebrews this comes from uh from the bible and this comes from hebrews chapter 11 now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's also the evidence of things not seen. This is how powerful your words are. The thing that you hope for, the thing that you can't see until you name it and claim it. Okay, so in answer to this question about is the scope of saying, I am love, I am happy, I am worthy, I am successful, I am, is it too wide for the belief that you are holding, which may be, I am unworthy, I am unloved, I am unhappy, I am unsuccessful, I am lacking in financial wherewithal. Is it too large a scope just to say that to change the belief? Well, my darlings, the answer to that question is yes, it can be. Not for everybody, but I'm going to say for the majority of people, yes, it can be. You see, it's vitally important that you marry the desire that you want. And I'll use finances. You marry the desire to have financial security with the words that you are putting out there. Because if you are saying, I am financially secure, right? Those are the words that are going out. But your true belief is, I'm as broke as a joke and I ain't never gonna have any money. I'm as broke as a damn joke and I ain't never gonna have any money. Or, me not have no money. Me not have no donzai. Me never have no donzai. If, if you, if this is the internal conversation and that internal conversation is the belief and the belief, your belief really is driven by how the emotions, how it makes you feel emotionally. And so if your internal emotions are saying, hey, you know, you're saying the words, but we both know it's a lie, Wins. We both know that you're a broke as a joke and it ain't funny. And it's not changing anytime soon. If this is the true belief 
then it doesn't matter what words you say. It doesn't matter if you affirm this a thousand times a day without setting, without setting the intention that your belief is going to change. So part of the affirmation process is setting the intention and the true intention that my belief is going to change. That when I say that I am uh, financially secure and here comes that voice, you, you're as broke as a joke, that I can say, no, I am not. I don't care what my bank balance says. I know that I am financially secure. I have X, Y, Z. I've got a million pounds, a million dollars, a million yen, a million, um, I don't know, guilders, a million, whatever. I have this in my account. Yeah, but you're as broke as a joke. No, I'm not. You're the joke because I am financially secure. This helps to set the intention. The other thing um, that I have done with the power of belief, and I, I, I really have to look to see if I've actually put this uh, tutorial out, but it's about visualization. And it was a webinar that I've done. I did this last year and it's about visualization. You see, part of the affirmation process is not only the words that you speak, but it's also about you visualizing and being in a moving visualization of what it is that you say that you want. You see, if you don't believe it, you're not gonna get it. And just by saying, I am worthy, if you don't believe it, isn't going to change your belief system. I am love, isn't going to change your belief system. So guys, you need to marry your five senses to your belief or to your desired wanting. And for those of you who know me, you know I'm gonna go there. What does it look like for you to be financially secure or for you to be worthy or you to be loved, for you to be whatever it is? What does it look like? The thing that you are affirming as I am, what does it look like? Paint me a picture. And it's not a picture of what you think it should look like or what society's saying it should be like. It's a picture of what it looks like to you. If you've never been a millionaire, all you can go on is what you think it will feel like, what you, what you think it will look like. That's all you've got is your imagination. So use it, it's yours. So create the belief. So what does it look like? to be worthy, to be loved, to be financially secure. What does it look like? Paint me or paint yourself a picture. What does it sound like? What does it sound like for, for you to be worthy, for you to be wealthy, for you to be loved, for you to be happy, for you to be content, for you to be peaceful? for you to be joyful. What does it sound like? Paint yourself an audio picture. You use your imagination to pull up the sounds. What does it feel like? What does it truly feel like for you? To be happy, to be successful, to be worthy, to be joyous to experience inner peace, what does it feel like? You see guys, only you, only you can know what that feels like for you. You can't take anybody else's idea of what it should feel like because then it is a should. No, you need to know categorically what it feels like to you, what it sounds like to you, what it looks like to you. And then guys, come on with it. You know me, food beyond its nutrition. Bon appetit, come on, let's eat. What does it taste like to you? What does it taste like to you to be worthy, to be happy, to be financially secure, to find that inner peace that you are looking for, the, to, 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 to match it to the affirmation that you're putting out? What does it taste like? 
What are you tasting? Is it sweet? Is it salty? Is it caramelized? Is it like the finest chocolate that, that, that they're ever made? It just melts on your tongue. What does it taste like? Does it taste like the world's best barbecue? What does it taste like? Or does it taste like spring on a wet and rainy day? Does it taste like the moon when it's at its fullest? Does it taste like sunshine on fresh linen? What does it taste like? This is unique to you. And the last thing being a master aromatherapist, darling, smell is, as they say, one of our most uh, primordial um, uh, uh, faculties that we have, the olfactory system. What does it smell like? Being successful, being at peace, having inner peace, being worthy. What does that smell like to you? What's it smell like? Does it smell like roses? Does it smell like, um, I don't know, Mrs. Fields cookies in, in, in the, the shopping mall? And those are a dying breed actually, shopping malls. But does it smell like that? Does it, does it smell like home? Does it smell like your mum? Does it smell like um, your man or, or, or your woman or your significant other? Does it smell like the perfume that you like to wear? You know, the one that's really expensive that you you um, you won't buy for yourself, but if somebody asks you what you want, you'll say it's that. What does it smell like? You see, guys, when you can attach your five senses to the I am that you are wanting, and believe me, you do want it, otherwise you wouldn't have come to the state of I am. But this is doing, as I call it, the inspired work in between. This is doing the work that will actually um, attach you to the thing that you say that you want with a reality. This is a moving visualization because when you are talking about I am and you can see it, you can hear it, you can feel it, you can taste it, you can smell it, you are it. It's, a, it's something moving, it's something tangible that you can literally hold on to. So, in answer to the question, is saying I am and whatever it is, I am worthy, I am love, I am happy, I am financially secure, um, I am clear, uh, whatever it is, is the scope too wide? It's too wide if you don't already believe it. You cannot use the affirmation to create the belief. The affirmation is about driving, driving the belief that you have already. The affirmation isn't about creating the belief, guys. Make sure that you understand that. An affirmation isn't designed to create your belief. You already know what you want. That's why you can say, I am worthy. An affirmation is about driving the belief that you have already about the thing that you say that you want. So if you are affirming and you're having this dialogue with the reasoning, analytical and logical minds or the logical, analytical and reasoning minds, I call them the laws, understand that you're not believing. Because if you say that I am love and then this whole dialogue flips in your head like, Oh yeah, loved by who, when, what, where. You know what happens to you, yada, yada, yada. I am successful. Girl, please, success, measure your success for me. Who are you using as a yardstick to measure yourself by because you know you're not successful? No, guys, this is not, this is not an affirmation that will bear results. So once again, recap, short, to the point. And guys, you know that that's so challenging for me. And it's not a challenge I'm really interested in changing if the truth be known. I say short recap, 
nah, I'll recap when I'm done, I'm done. Okay, all right. Um, an affirmation. An affirmation comes from taking the 26 letters of the English alphabet or whatever language you speak with your alphabet. It's about putting those together to create words. Words actually come from a pictorial image that you have in your mind that you are able to resonate and relate to, okay? If I say a rose, you're gonna pull up in your mind a rose. If I say um, uh, a car, you're gonna pull up in your mind a car Whatever color it is or whatever, whatever type of car it is, that's okay. The general structure is a car, okay? So words, when you actually put the 26 letters of the alphabet together, when, when you put them together to create words, words communicate to you that which you say. You want to communicate to the universe and to other people, okay? So words are a source of communication. Use them wisely. Use them wisely, okay? So your affirmation is something that you want to communicate. So you've put the words together and you've come up with I am. And I am for me is one of the most powerful phrases that you can use before anything because it means that you have stated a claim. The next phase of that, or you have chosen to state a claim. The next phase behind that is do you actually believe the thing that you've just said, that I am too? Do you believe I am wealthy? I am healthy. I am vibrant. I am spiritually fulfilled. I am successful. I, do, do, do you believe it? You see, your affirmation doesn't drive drive you to believe. Your affirmation will drive your belief. So what you need to do is make sure that your belief is in alignment with that which you are trying to affirm. And in order to do that, you need to be able to see it. You need to be able to feel it. You, able, you need to be able to hear it. You need to be able to taste it. You need to be able to smell it. These are how our senses are engaged. And once you can do all of that, you need to revel in it. You need to immerse yourself in it. You need to take your imagination all the way there. Okay, guys? This will support your belief. The other thing is, I, 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 I this uh, tutorial I, I've done, I, I, it might be, and I'm, I, 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 because it, it, I think it's maybe about four or five years old. It's called cancel that. Because we will have this talk come up. We will have the doubts come up. We will have, our fears will arise and they arise so that we can put them out. So our fears will come up. And I, I did this whole thing, it's called cancel that. Your fears come up, you, you've done the whole, the whole thing. You've created your affirmation and you know now that your affirmation will drive your belief. So in order for you, for your affirmation to manifest what it is that you want, you have to be in alignment with your belief. In order to do that, you need that moving visualization within your mind. You need to use your imagination to create that moving visualization so that your five senses are engaged. So, so that the um, seeing, the feeling, the hearing, the smelling and the tasting is all engaged. That, that's vitally important. And with that, it's also equally important that you turn the um, negative chatter off. You turn the negative chatter off. And to that end, I, I created this thing, it's called Cancel That. And that's something that I literally use. You know, I'll be working, doing affirmations and things will pop up that truly aren't supportive of what I want. And I'll catch myself and I'm like, cancel that. Cancel that. I wanna say four years ago, five years ago, I did this thing where it was 90 days 
of literally nothing but positive thinking and or checking yourself for the negativity that comes up in your life. And I was astounded, like the first day, all this stuff that came out, came up. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, that, that's amazing. Maybe I'll do, it, do that this year, towards the end of this year. Maybe that's something that I'll do because that was actually a powerful lesson for me. It, it, it really taught me where my mind goes. So anyway, with that being said, you need, I think, as um, you need a mechanism to, to bring you back into alignment. I use cancel that. When I was actually talking to the women at Shade Tree, I said, if you, if you wear jewelry or, or anything like that, or even to put a rubber band around your, around your wrist and you know, something comes up, bing, pull it, touch it, pull, cancel that. Give yourself something, a mechanism that will bring you back into alignment. And what will happen is, and this is a fact, the negative chatter will get less and less and the voice become lower and lower until you no longer hear it anymore. And you realize this is my manifestation. One other thing that I would say is I have, um, I've got a couple of clients, uh, one in particular, and she is a master manifester. I, when I say, <clears throat> I glory when I watch her. And when she gets something, I glory because I can see it in her eyes. I can see it in her eyes. And what I see in her eyes is that she's married to it. Her lock, stock and barrel, emotionally, spiritually, all her feelings, everything. And what I see in her eyes is she's gone beyond that. She's gone to the next stage because she's living it. She's master manifester. And I love the fact that she's in my life. And I love watching that about her because I actually find it very inspirational. So that being said, guys, I hope this has been helpful and I hope it has answered your questions. Um, if it has not, please reach out to me because that means that I haven't articulated what needs to be articulated for you to, to understand. So I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn from the laws, plural. It's the laws, plural, of attraction in action. And until next time, guys, peace. Thank you.